Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to your next episode of One Man and His Boat. What are we going to talk about today? We are talking about weather and tides. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a very warm welcome indeed to your next episode of One Man and His Boat. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you very much for all your support and all your comments throughout the months. We have been absolutely blown away with uh, all your kind comments. Now, weather and tides uh, is a huge subject, especially for a single-handed fisherman. And I am standing in front of uh, a historic monument uh, we call the weather glass, or the weather glass if you're from Scotland. <laughs> Uh, this, I wouldn't even like to uh, imagine how many generations of families have stood right here looking at this barometer to see if it's safe to go to sea. Now the men of old, uh, they actually had to rely on this piece of instrument and, and this uh, lovely glass box behind us and they used to actually ask the priest what God was going to do. Uh, Obviously, we're very lucky these days because we've got satellites and all the, all the ch weather channels of the world, which makes it even more complicated than asking for the big man upstairs what on earth the weather's going to do today. Uh, but I take my hat off to the men because they were absolutely... The, woods, uh, the boats were built with wood, but the men were certainly built with steel, that's for sure. Right ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're talking about weather and here at Dunbar we have the prevailing winds of a westerly wind which is absolutely fantastic in the summer time. However, uh, it all changes come autumn time which we are in now. Now there's an old folklore here at Dunbar saying if the man in the mine shows his head then it's uh, going to be a long winter. Now what does that mean? That means the May Island that you see at the back of me here, if the wind turns round to the north or swings round to the east, uh, is bad news for Dunbar and the fishermen here. So southeast is not too bad, we get a lot of shelter from St Abs Head, uh, but anything from east to north uh, is really bad indeed for Dunbar. Right boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it is a beautiful here at sunny Dunbar and unfortunately we're not at sea. Why aren't we at sea? Well, the tides are against us. Why are the tides against us? Well, the tides are on a very big spring at the moment and by the time daylight comes in, uh, the tides are way in air working day and it just does not make sense to actually spend the money on bait, on fuel, to go to sea just for one day because tomorrow it's all kicking off. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, what's the difference between a spring and a neap tide? Well, it's all to do with the moon's gravitational pull, yes. Uh, we're dealing with space now. <laughs> it's not about just nature around about your feet, it's all about space. Now for a neap tide, that means that the tides are very small indeed. They don't rise and fall that uh, badly. Now the moon has to be 90 degrees to the earth from the sun. Yes, exactly. We're not just about fishing, it's all about astronomy as well. And for spring tides, that's when you have the largest range. Now what does that mean? That means the top of the tide to the bottom of the tide has the, the deepest flow. Here at Dunbar we have a, a maximum of a six metre tide. And obviously it can go down to a uh, chart datum, which is basically the very bottom that was ever measured. Now, for in order to have a spring tide, the moon has to be in line with the sun and the earth itself, and that gives the, the moon the most gravitational pull. That's why you get the biggest tides. So guys, I mentioned earlier on about all the satellites that we've got these days and how spoilt we are for the weather forecasts. Now, you can get a lot of these weather forecasts on apps, uh, straight onto your phone, everything's all hunky-dory, jackanory. However, I've found, I'll use three main apps, 
and I've found that each app is completely different to the next. So the, what you have to do is actually figure out best between each app itself and figure out the weather yourself. <laughs> what apps I use is WinGuru, uh, BBC Met Office and Windy.com and I find I get the best sort of average from these three apps together. So guys, Tides, what do I use? It's tidetimes.org.uk and obviously for our international people, you go to your local uh, Tide books, uh, they'll point you in the right direction about what's in your local area. So everyone, now that we've talked about the weather and the tides, eh, I thought I'd give you a little tour of Dunbar Harbour. Now, a few of the, our international friends have been asking that it's been a beautiful harbour and could you please run around it? So we're going to oblige. So guys, this is the Victoria Harbour. This was built back in the 19th century eh, and it was named after Queen Victoria. Uh, here behind me you see the entrance of Dunbar Harbour itself. Now back in the day this was actually all blocked off, this was all part of the castle uh, and it was actually blown through to block off the other entrance because there was too much swell running in the harbour. So as you can see behind us we have Dunbar Castle. Now this is a very famous castle eh, because the Scottish Government actually pulled it down because it was a threat. Eh, I don't know what kind of threat it was to them but however eh, the government ones as always destroying everything that they touch they pulled a beautiful castle down eh, and then the guys back in the day decided oh we'll just blow the rest of it up by making another entrance. <laughs> So guys, behind us we have the beautiful Dunbar Battery, just recently refurbished and they've made, the Harbour Trust has made a wonderful job of it. Uh, the reason the battery was built, it was attacked way back in 1780 by John Paul Jones. Now our American friends will know exactly who that is because he was uh, in the American Navy, who was actually a Scotsman. So yeah, that, figure that one out for yourselves guys.
So guys, behind me we have the Broadhaven. Now, as you can see behind me, it's all blocked off with boulders. Now this actually used to be the original entrance to Dunbar Harbour. And I take my, men, my hat off to the many old who used to come in on sale uh, because Victoria Harbour wasn't there obviously. Uh, the Cromwell Harbour on my left, which you'll see in a minute, uh, was the original harbour and what they had to do when the weather was bad was actually block it off with big branders. Now uh, to this day you can actually still see where the crane was and where the Roman numerals are in the wall for which beam went where to block the harbour off which I thought is fantastic, it really is. It gives a right old history to Dunbar Harbour. Now as a kid I actually used to play here uh, on my wee Orkney Longliner when I was 13 years old uh, I used to row it here because we, we were still saving up for an engine back then and the, the breakwater was a little bit further down and when the weather was rough we used to come round here and try and splash the boat into the, the breakwater and it was so much fun guys honestly. The things that you used to do as a kid that you never saw the danger of are no different nowadays <laughs> because I've had my experiences and uh, when I look back on it I think that was a stupid thing to do Barry. So guys, here we have the Cromwell Harbour, named after Oliver Cromwell himself, and it was built way back in 1640. Right guys, not only is this the Cromwell Harbour, but this is our safe haven. When the weather becomes really bad, this is where we have to hide. And it's a good little harbour to do that because uh, since the Dunbar Harbour Trust has built up the Broadhaven, which you've seen with all the boulders, it stopped a lot of the swell coming in and a lot of the movement from the boats. Now when I think back when I was a kid, how many boats used to work out of here, and there used to be a different type of fishery back then, it used to be mostly prawning uh, and white fish. Uh, it, it blows my mind of what's happened in my lifetime. So it makes me wonder what's going to be left for the next generation. So guys, as you know, this is the Victoria Harbour and it's been here since the 19th century, just the same as my family. And uh, the generations that's been fishing out of here has just been tenfold. And it's sad to say that I'm the last. Right guys, normally uh, you pass all your information down onto your children and unfortunately my children are not interested in going to sea, which I don't blame them, especially under the pressures that I've got to fish in. Uh, so this is why I've started One Man and His Boat. I want to teach anybody that's willing to learn, this is what we have to do to actually make a living from the sea in these days' climates. So guys, as you can see, we have a new name on our plaque and congratulations to Jackie Tag, who's joined us as a first mate. Uh, all the goodies are on their way to her. So guys, Christmas is coming up. Uh, it's time to hit two birds with one stone. One, you can get your own very own merchandise. Uh, and two, you can help one man in his boat out by moving forward. And that's what we want to do, guys. We want to move forward. So keep up with your likes and your shares. Uh, make sure you get onto our website and make sure that you... Uh, click everything that you need. So guys, winter is round the corner. We're in uh, uh, mid-autumn now and uh, it's going to start getting chillier. So One Man Is Boat is going to deal with your needs and we are going to get our hoodies. Yes, hoodies are coming guys. So Jeff will be wearing a hoodie uh, out on the boat so you'll get to see your, your, uh, how good the hoodies look, especially on our top model like Jeff. Uh, I won't be wearing one because obviously I'm doing all the grafting. <laughs> uh, but you guys, you can get your own hoodies at omhb.com and you click those buttons guys. You help our channel out because everything that you do helps us move forward and I can't thank you all enough for all the support that you ever give. So guys, before we finish this vlog, I just quickly want to talk to you about the ML5s. Yes, I'm sorry you've had such a wonderful vlog, but I've got to go back down the political route. Now, I've sat my ML5 and I was quite impressed actually because the doctors that dealt with it were very swift and very professional indeed. And yes, I was worried about it, but we went through it quite uh, quickly and efficiently and I can only thank the fisherman's mission for that because our lovely Donna, our local um, f uh, mission officer, she organised absolutely everything so the guys didn't have to do a thing, they just turned up on the day, filled out the paperwork, got through their ML5 and uh, carried on with their day's work. However, there was a few guys that couldn't pass their ML5. Now that's the worrying bit, this is the bit that uh, gets me because there's no come and go with the MCA. They don't, they don't seem to realise that this is men's livelihood, this is their jobs, this is everything to them. 
and they've not got opportunities to do anything else. And that's that's the scariest thing for the fishermen. So if the MCA can sit down round the board and say, right, we'll come and go with you a wee bit, you know, this this is the thing, that would be a proper step forward. But it's all up to the MCA as usual. So guys, how does that ML5 affect Dunbar Harbour? Well, unfortunately, um, very severely actually, because by the end of this year, by the end of 2023, we are going to lose four boats and it's all to do with the ML5s. Now, what uh, I'm upset about is this is really targeting either overweight fishermen or older generation. Now, the older generation are just doing this job to keep themselves going. And if they've not got this, what are they going to do? Absolutely nothing. Uh, and they've said themselves, they don't know what they're going to do when they finish this. But to uh, a town like ours losing four boats, it's a f***ing disaster, guys. And if this is just one area, what's it like for the rest of the areas, especially the people that need um, the, the boats there to actually have more industrial jobs. I mean, because you've not just got the fishing boats, we've already discussed this. You've got people who repair the boats, you've got the, the food processors themselves, you've got the, the buyers, you've got accountants, you've got absolutely everybody all around, involved around the boat. And now that's gone. So guys, I'm so sorry about um, finishing on a dour note there, but that's what happens when politics gets involved with fishing. Uh, but I do hope you've enjoyed this vlog. It was quite fun making it with Jeff, especially hopefully if he put some bloopers in here. <laughs> hopefully uh, next time that you see your next vlog, we shall be at sea. Fingers crossed, please. And um, we really need to get back out to sea. Uh, so if you like this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. Please write a comment below if you have any questions. And please, please, please subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, tick that notification bell and YouTube will let you know exactly when we have our next vlog out and get onto omhb.com and order your merch help the channel out help us move forward guys so until your next vlog my friends you take care of yourselves i'll see you in the next one all the very best